Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to play Wildflowers by Tom Petty. This has long been a favorite of mine, and many of you have requested it, so I am happy to bring you this lesson. So uh, before I get going, remember that you can follow along with the chord sheet I have available at my website, playsongnotes.com. It's a great way to just access all the notes and the tabs and even the lyrics that I'm going to sort of uh, present to you in this lesson. You know, you can keep that chord sheet with you outside of this video and all that sort of thing. So check out the website, playsongnotes.com. It's all there for you. And um, otherwise, here's what we're going to cover in this lesson today. Skip ahead if you know what you want, but it's uh, a fun song, pretty straightforward song, but lots of little nuance and tricks and fills and flourish you can add. And I'm going to walk you through it, right? I'll show you a beginner version and I'll show you some ways you can make things a bit more advanced if, if that's your bag. So let's get to it. Uh, first up, we're going to have a capo in the fifth fret. It'll let you play it uh, using the chord shapes and be in the same pitch as Tom Petty, right? And I think that this is a song where having the capo really gives you a distinct sound. Just, you know, the chords you're using, they sound so much better when you're capoed on the fifth fret. You could play them without a capo down here, but it, it just doesn't have that same like magical, very distinct sound. So capo on the fifth fret, and let's get going. So first up, uh, let me show you the chords we're gonna need. So. Um, if we're just worrying about the verse and the chorus, which are kind of the same thing, if they're even different, you only need these three chords. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, we're we're going to have an F add 9, a C, and a G. Okay? Now, let's talk about um, these three chords as they're played together here. Right? And what I mean by that is, first thing I'm going to note is your pinky, your right pinky, is going to be on the third fret, and that's relative to the capo, right? So first, second, third fret of the thinnest string. And it's going to be there for all three of these chords. That makes switching a lot easier because this finger is something you don't have to worry about, right? Now, beyond that, your index finger is going to go on this first fret of the uh, second string. And it's going to be there for the F add 9 and for the C, okay? You're just going to lift it off for the G. So right away we have two, uh, two elements that are in common for most of these chords. And the third element that's really in common is your, your other notes here. You're going to have the ring finger is always going to play the bass note of the chord, and the middle finger is always going to play one string thinner and one fret further up, right? So for the F add 9, we're going to start on the fourth string with our ring finger, uh, third fret, second fret on the third string uh, with our middle finger, and then our index finger will be on the first fret, so third fret, second fret, first fret, and that's on the 4th, 3rd, 2nd string, right? And then put your pinky down. Okay, so this is called an F add 9. Um, for the G, all we're going to do is move these two fingers, our ring and our middle, just towards your face, one string thicker each, right? But they're going to stay kind of diagonal from each other, right? So this is the F add 9, and then this is the C. Now, normally when you play a C, you might be used to letting the thinnest string have no finger on it, right? Here we want to keep our pinky down. This is a G note and it's in the C major uh, chord, so it's technically just a perfect, you know, a C major chord. But we have our F add 9 and our C, and just check out how similar that sort of uh, positioning is, right, those voicings. All you're doing is just changing your uh, thickest two, thickest two uh, notes that you're playing here with these two fingers, right? And then for the G, it's more of the same. We're going to move these two fingers towards your face, one string thicker each, keep their diagonal position relative to each other, and then lift off your index finger. Okay, so this will be your G. All right? So the F add 9, and the C, and the G, and then practice going back to the C, because I think that's, that's a key this, this, um, this song is in, and it's a good home base, right? You start on the F, you go to the C, you go down to the G and you go back to the C, right? You can just repeat that. And obviously I'll get into the tempo and everything. Um, a couple little tricks here about the G. One thing you'll see me do, and this is in this song and lots of other songs, is lots of times I will just not play this fifth, um, fifth string note on the G. Uh, meaning, instead of pushing my middle finger down into it, sometimes I'll just leave my middle finger off and I'll just let this ring finger gently touch the fifth string. And what that, that, that does is it it mutes the fifth string. If I was to pluck the fifth string, it doesn't make a sound, but if I was to pluck the whole chord, right? Um, so you're getting, you're getting a G chord there, it's a G major, but it's just a lot easier, um, it's one less note to worry about, and uh, that's something you'll see me do. So if you have questions about that, just take note, I'm doing that quite a bit. 
But those are the chords we're going to need. Now, next, let me real quick talk about some ways we're going to sort of uh, f add some flourish to each of these chords. And because later on, what we're going to be doing is adding some hammering on like this. All right. So in each of those chords, except for the G, I'm sort of adding a finger um, late, and that adds a nice little sound. So what that looks like here is for the F add nine, our, our middle finger in our left hand on that third string, um, we want to get used to playing the chord without it, and then putting the middle finger down. So you have these two voicings. And as you get good and more comfortable, you can add the hammer on, right? Um, same with the C, it's going to be our left middle finger. This time it's on the fourth string. Right? So very similar. F add nine and the C. You want to get good at doing this. If you if you can't do the hammering on, that's fine. And by hammering on, I mean you're, you're forcefully bringing the finger down. And just by it hitting the string, it causes what sounds like a new pluck of the string, even though you're not plucking the string. Even if you can't do the hammer on though, it's good to practice that. Okay? For the G, what I like to practice is our index finger on this first fret. You want to push it down and take it off, right? So those are the modifications we're going to do to, to all the chords. You also could on the G if you wanted to do your left middle finger. I actually don't do this too much when I'm playing, but uh, it's a good one to, to learn if you want something to practice. But those are the sort of uh, little flourish hammer-ons and just um, chord flourish notes I want to want to teach you to have in your bag of tricks. Now let's look at the sort of verse and uh, the strumming and, and the verse and the intro of the song used. Now that we have the chords. So first up, timing, right? We're going to take those four chords and we're going to put them into um, four beat measures, right? And we're going to have four measures and we're going to have one chord for each measure, right? So straight away, it's going to be the F add nine for four counts, right? One, two, three, four to C, two, three, four to G, two, three, four to C, two, three, four. And you're just going to repeat that. And this is the progression that the entire song uses with the exception of the bridge. Uh, it's going to go between these four chords, right? So F add nine and C, two, three, four, and G, two, three, four, C, right? You could sing. And I, you belong among the wildflowers. And you belong in a boat out at sea, right? It's just going through that progression, right? You can count it if you want, if you want to get really tight with the tempo and the, or the rhythm. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Two, three, four, one. So basically, the one count is the most important time because that's when you're changing the chords. So if you did just a strum on the one count and that's when you played each new chord you're on, that would be it. You, you could play the entire song like that. And if you wanted, you could strum on every count, just do all down strums. This would be the simplest possible way to play it, right? So, yeah, you belong among the wildflowers. You belong in a ship out at sea. Right? Uh, that could get you through the entire song. I'm going to keep going though and try to emulate what Tom Petty is playing here with his band because I think there's a lot of uh, cool stuff as far as strumming pattern and some nuance you can do. So from there, what are we going to uh, what, what are we gonna look at? So one thing is if you can, you could bring down that hammer on note on the first count of the F add 9 and the C uh, measures, right? So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, Right? Um, this is something that, again, if you can't do it, don't worry about it. You can skip it. It'll be totally fine. But this is basically a distinctive part of what you hear in the album. But let's bring in some more of the strumming now. Um, one thing you'll hear is, is Tom Petty's... Um, th there's two guitars, it sounds like, in the, the intro of the song, or throughout the, the album version of the song. It sounds like the um, there's one guitar in the background that's doing a down, down, up, down, up, 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 one, two, and four, and one, two and four and one, two, and four and one, two, right? So if we did the progression like that. Yeah. 
Right? But then there's a second guitar, which is the one with the volume a little bit higher in the intro, that is basically playing that uh, on the one count. Right, It's playing the, the strum of the chord with the hammer on for the F add 9 and the C. But then on the four count, it's doing a down strum of the entire chord that you just played before switching to the next chord. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. the hammer on. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay? Um, and then from there, if you want to do the full strum, I would do the down, down, up, down, up, down, down. And that would sound like this, right? Uh, but we want to keep the accent on that one count and then also on the four count. So... And then the other thing is during the um, during the verse, you know, when you're playing the uh, You belong somewhere you feel free All I'm doing there is sort of doing one um, four count sequence of strumming with my middle finger lifted off of the C, right? So I'll play that part, right? Sail away Kill all of the hours You belong somewhere you feel free Okay, so that's a similar, just um, the hammer on um, You're not hammering on there, but it's the same idea where it's that middle finger note on the C You're just lifting it off, doing the strumming pattern one whole time and then putting it back down and that's basically all you're going to use for the intro and for the verse. And again, especially in the intro, if you can, get that hammer on going on the one count strum of each chord. It's a bit trickier to do, for sure. When you have the full strumming and you're trying to get the, the, the you know, have a nuanced sound, but also accent some of the strums, adding that hammer on is definitely tricky, but it makes it sound really nice and good if you can do it. Okay, so you're going to use that for the intro and the verse. And then we're going to look at this uh, bridge section here, right? And this is, there's no words at this part, but basically uh, this is going to sound like... Okay, so what's going on here? It's a lot of the same chords. We're gonna use that F add nine again. We're gonna use that C again. Um, we're also gonna have an A minor here though, okay? For the A minor, I, left my, I lift my pinky off of that high E string, right? So starting on the fifth string, open, second, second, first, open. And that's frets, right? Open, fifth string, second fret, second fret, first fret, open is your A minor. Now this next chord is, um, normally it, this would sort of um, be played a different way, but it, it sounds like it's a D over F sharp. But instead of doing a typical, you know, D over F sharp like that, what we're going to do is keep our hand in the A minor position, and we're going to lift up our middle finger and put it on the second fret of the low E string. And I'm going to kind of mute the um, the fifth string just to make it easier there. So second muted, open second first. This is almost like an A minor over F sharp, but really I think it's it's like a D7 with an F sharp bass, right? It's basically like this D7, right? Open, second, first, second. But we're gonna, for our bass note, we're gonna play this note right here. And then we're not gonna sort of play the thinnest string. So think of this though, just your A minor position and then move your middle finger there. So regular A minor, D over F sharp. And 
it's very minimal movement when you do it that way, right? And then we're gonna go to a G, right? The G we already know. So those chords again, F at nine, the C, the A minor, D over F sharp, G. Now, how is this um, going to be played? I'll tell you. Basically, we're gonna use our regular strumming pattern of down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, for the entire song, except for, the for this bridge, when we're doing these fast switches from the F to the C to the A minor to the D over F sharp, we're gonna do a down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, it looks like this. If you were to write it out, notice I had the accents on the one and the three count, right? One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. We're gonna go through that four count sequence twice. Then we're gonna go back to the old strumming pattern for a bunch of times, okay? So if we were to strum it out, um, it would be. Okay, so again, it's the F to the C, to the A minor, to the D over F sharp, to the G. And then we're gonna stay on this first strumming pattern now and go to an F, to an A minor, to a G. thing and I'll talk through this drumming just to make it clear, right? So down, down, up, 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 down, up, down, down, and the fast part, down, down, up, down. Now, a couple little bits of nuance you can use for this song now. Starting in that bridge section is when you arrive on that final G, what you can do is keep your index finger down. Okay, so notice when I play it this time, when I get to that G, I'm gonna start with it down and then take it off. So it goes like this. Okay, so each time I ended up on the G there, I started with it down for one measure of down, down, up, down, up, right? So that's an important thing that I think helps you sound like uh, Tom Petty. So uh, that's basically how you're gonna play Wildflowers by Tom Petty. I hope this was helpful for you. And uh, remember to check out my website, playsongnotes.com to get the chord sheet if you want to follow along outside of this video. So thank you all very much for watching. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. It really uh, keeps me motivated and I hope these lessons are helpful for you. I would not be making them uh, as much as I do without y'all's support. So thank you very much. Likewise, thanks to all of you who have uh, sent me some uh, kind donations to the tip jar. It's very much appreciated and keep the emails and comments and kind requests coming. I'll, I'll do all the lessons I can. I can't do all the requests, but uh, they all are read by me and definitely help me uh, steer the ship as I plan out new lessons. So thanks all very much. Have a great night wherever you are, and uh, go pick up your guitar and play. Bye-bye.